Hey gang, I'm Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to the channel. I've been all over town this morning getting supplies for the build. As you can see in the back of the truck, I got all our doors, not just any old doors, custom with jams because of all the different wall situations we had upstairs. But we're not gonna be installing those doors just yet. We wanna head upstairs and get the plumbing completely locked out. So we're gonna grab our plumbing tools and show you a ton of plumbing tips and tricks because we have an appliance that I'm pretty sure most of you have never even heard of. Let's head upstairs and get started. And the installation of the vanity is gonna start with the installation of the stops while we have all this access. If you ever hear the word stop by a plumber, all they're talking about is a valve. We got these nice ones for expandable PEX, our PEX A. I've got the water shut off, Jordan, so don't use your toilet, dude, okay? Did you figure it out yet? Nope. <laughs> and then I removed the cap on the diverter and the shower so we can get some air in the system and bleed the water down. Hopefully I won't get too much of a bath. Just gonna cut these caps off, install our valves. Okay, there you go. Let some air in the system. There you go, not too bad at all. You like? Love. I got our two white plastic escutcheons on there. We've got our crimping collars and there's a ridge on this side so the ridge acts as a stop when you slide that on just like that got my expander ready my valve ready just put on the hot first Go get the vanity, hang it on here, and rough in the trap. See what a big mess this is? I gotta put a trap adapter on there, and then I got this to deal with. So I had to buy something kind of special. I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. <laughs> is that gonna do that the whole time? The whole video. <laughs> Wow, nice. Chrome and white, and then that's gonna be black. Nice. Yeah, I wanna mix it up a little for you. A little tricolor action. <laughs> Got the vanity hanging on the cleat. Just temporary right now. We took the doors off so I don't damage them when I'm working in here. Now we're gonna just dry set this on top and rough in all our plumbing. Then once our plumbing's roughed in, we'll put everything in permanent. So what I gotta do is I gotta put the stopper here in the drain. It's gonna come down right here. We gotta put in a fitting to take care of our condensate drain and a trap tied into here. So you can already see we gotta cut the bottom of this out. Modification number three, Jordan. It looks like an angle cut too. It does. Angle modifications, love them. Hey guys, I've been working with wood my whole life. And later on in this project, you're gonna see us install these solid core wooden doors you see behind me, along with a bunch of other woodworking projects. And we use Woodworkers Guild of America to make sure we do it absolutely right. Woodworkers Guild of America is an awesome online resource for woodworking ideas, information, and instructions. And I've already learned countless things from their website. Simple things like how to remove a water ring that Rad got on my wife's favorite piece of furniture, all the way to making a complicated dining room table for my daughter. And as a member, we're given access to online tutorials and Q&As where experts engage with us in real time. And the Woodworkers Guild of America is always creating awesome new content to keep their members engaged and excited. From premium videos on finishing wood, bandsaw techniques, joinery, and even cabinet making, I'm sure Woodworkers Guild of America can give you the knowledge and tips to amplify your woodworking skills. And check out this awesome deal, guys. The first 1,000 people who use the link in our description will get a full one year premium membership to Woodworkers Guild of America for only $1.49. Thanks again to Woodworkers Guild of America for sponsoring our video. Let's head back to work. All right, guys, we are semi roughed in, at least to the point where now I know what I need to get at the store. We're gonna come off of here, the main drain, inch and a half PVC with either a 45 or a 22 and a half street elbow. The street has a male end, which goes in the female end of this trap adapter. The street is gonna just give me a little bit more room, pushing it back that way, so I don't have to make everything up so tight. So it looks like another store run for me. I'm gonna to head to the store, hopefully just one trip job. Alrighty guys, back from the quick store run. So I found a street 45. 
And my trap adapter with a female fitting is gonna go right on there. It's gonna save us about that much room under here because it's already pretty tight. So I've already got my inch and a half pipe marked right here. We're gonna remove the vanity because it is pretty tight in there so I can cut it. I'm gonna glue all this on and then we'll reinstall the vanity and then mark the bottom. As you can see, I've already started to make a cutout because this P-trap has to go way down there. <laughs> Guys, we're all cut, ready to put on our Street 45. I'm gonna use clear primer. I learned long ago that in a finished house, a finished project, purple primer, bad news. You spill one drop, it's gonna stain this floor tile. So if you're a remodeler, a contractor, even a DIYer, in the finished stages, use clear primer. Let's talk about dauber size. What the heck's a dauber? That's a dauber, but look at the size difference. Look at the size difference of what comes with this little can and what comes with the big can. So if you're doing big pipe, this is gonna go way faster. Let's throw this one in the trash, get this 45 glued on. I've already got it clean. And you can see we've got our condensate line and a bucket of water. In case that thing ever comes on, we're not gonna get a bath. Put it on, quarter turn. Perfect, all right, let's rehang the vanity and mark where we have to cut out the bottom for the P-trap. Vanity is back installed. I've marked the face of my trap adapter right there in the center line. And then this X marks the spot is the center of the drain straight down from our sink. I've connected those two marks with a line. So we're gonna go downstairs and use that line as a reference because we've got to cut a hole there. Here's the size of my hole, three by seven inches. Seven inches this way and three wide. I know three sounds like a lot, for this little pipe, which is only inch and a half, but this slip joint nut ends up right there on this shelf. So I need that three inches to be able to get in there and tighten mm. that nut. <sighs> Gotta think ahead. All right, I think this is gonna be the last time, Jordan, I'm gonna say this. Let's take the vanity off the wall. Fastest way I know to make a template for a router. As long as it's square, rectangle, circles and ovals, no good. All right guys, got our template set up exactly where we want it. Got two clamps on it. One is never enough, it'll move if you just put one clamp on it when you're routing. Need a pilot bit so my router bit can go all the way through the wood. This one has a bearing on the top and the bottom. Got it chucked in my DeWalt. It shouldn't take but a minute. That is a really nice looking cut. Looks like we didn't just hack it out with the multi-tool. I mean, you could probably use this for something, Jordan, right? And yeah, I got, I got the perfect use for it. All right, now for the last time, let's hang the vanity on the wall. All right, guys, the vanity's in, looks great. The hole we made lines perfectly with the drain we installed. But here's our next problem. The problems never end with this vanity, right? Jordan and I were talking, we think the simplest vanity is when you order. This one that you order has four legs, no back, and a pre-installed top. You just gotta install the faucet, push against the wall, and hook up the drain, right? No fun. So here's the problem on this one. It's just hanging on that cleat, which is really strong, but yeah, no good. A lot of bounce in that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna drill a hole through this metal bracket. Well, there's already a hole in the metal bracket. We're gonna drill a hole through the wood and our blocking we use for this screw is way up here also. Already checked the phone, already checked the picture on my phone. I'm gonna put a structural screw through that bracket. So the head, grab that steel, be nice and strong. On the other side, we have a stud right here. How do we know? Because our rear earth magnet is stuck to the drywall screw. I'm gonna put another structural screw right here with a horseshoe, horseshoe shim right there. We're going to drill a couple pilot holes through the wood, then we'll drill through the tile, run our structural screws in. Yeah, go ahead. That was a mess. No. It was a miss with this screw. Okay, go ahead. 
Jim. Nice. Oh man, like that toilet. <laughs> You know why that was so fast? Why? Because I'm in a grout line. Nice. It's super soft. Nice. I planned it that way. Nice. Oh yeah. All right, check this out, guys. <laughs> I think I'm moving the whole wall. So now that that's done, let's install the faucet on the sink top first. Way easier, right? And then we'll put the whole thing down on here with some Lexel. All right, guys, we're installing the faucet on the vanity. Jordan bought Delta for the whole apartment up here. Shower, vanity, kitchen, the whole works. Yeah, Delta costs a little more. But, a lot more. Yeah, but in my opinion, the finish is superior. The functionality of it is superior. And look at this feature. So there is a threaded rod coming down from the faucet. You can see it in there. And it's usually a hassle to get up under here and tighten the nut. But this is the nut. And look at that. They even have a little lever on there. So you can just get it hand tight. Wow. I think that's just awesome. They're like looking out for the, the industry, right? Right. Making things easy. Well, the number one, two, and three complaints with faucets, finish comes off, right? Yep. All the finish is coming off, it's getting damaged, and then it leaks or the functionality, the water's coming from a place it shouldn't or it's not coming out fast enough. Yep. And then it's a pain in the butt to install. Those are like the top three complaints. I would agree. So. Well, we are done. All right, guys, we are attaching our vanity top with a bead of Lexel all the way around. Did you know that Lexel is the duct tape of the caulking industry? This stuff sticks to everything and we absolutely love it. Picking it up from the faucet, huh? Yes, sir. Are the hoses Feel, inside? Feeling bold, huh? Yeah. Are the hoses inside? Uh, yes. Done. <laughs> Looking official, looking official. We are back the next day. Lexel's all dried. The vanity top is all secure. And I got here a little earlier and I roughed in the P-trap because I just wanted to make sure everything was gonna fit in this special cutout we made. And look how nice that looks. And I have plenty of room to tighten all my slip joint nuts and everything else. Now let's walk through this plumbing a little bit. We're gonna start at the back. The Delta faucet comes with supply hoses. They got the red one for hot, obviously. And the one over here, the blue, is cold. I've already got those tight. I never cut those off, although you can. Delta sends you a new ferrule, but there's all kind of legalese in the uh, instructions about how you avoid the warranty. So I would never cut them off, but you can if you absolutely have to. So the water is onto the building and these are ready to go. Now, if you watched our channel before, you know that we always purge our system before we run water through an aerator on a faucet, or we take the aerator off. This waterfall type faucet does not have an aerator. So the instructions want you to get this line way up there, see it Jordan? And purge it through there. And that's why I have this bucket and this piece of hose. So we are gonna purge the line. Now let's talk about the P-trap. This is all inch and a half, and a bathroom vanity has inch and a quarter tailpiece. I used to put all inch and a quarter P-traps on bathrooms, and then I realized every inch and a half P-trap comes with an inch and a half by inch and a quarter reducing washer like that. So a few years ago, I just changed the way I did it. I just make all my traps an inch and a half and it's way easier, right? Fewer, fewer parts to buy at the store. You just make everything inch and a half. And in my opinion, with all the hair in a bathroom and everything else, inch and a half is probably gonna work better anyway. Now you'll notice this right here. That is for the drain for our AC system. That's a condensate pump, pumps it into our sewer system. I had to get a whole thing to adapt this tiny quarter inch tubing into this seven a stub out here. So we're gonna show you that as well. But right now, let's purge this water system. We'll turn the water on, turn it back off, put it in our drain for good, fire up the sink. And you might even be able to look in the water to see if there's any trash in there. And you have to do both the hot and the cold, right? Yep. With PEX, I wouldn't expect there to be a lot of trash in there, but well worth doing. All right, that's good. So our faucet's all purged, we got it hooked up. Faucet is all done. Now we gotta work on the drain. Remember, I just dry fit it, so I'm gonna take it apart, because when I dry fit it, I didn't even put the plumber's putty under here. Wanted to make sure everything was good to go before I did that. Now that I know we're ready, picked up some new plumber's putty, and look at that. They make it in a small container now, 
because mine's always dried out and I end up throwing away almost a full tub because we don't use it that much. Oh, toilet. <laughs> All right, just make a snake out of the plumber's putty. I'm gonna put it under the flange on my tailpiece. We always get comments like, yeah, use silicone, use this, use that, but just use whatever you like, guys, whatever you're used to. I'm used to plumber's putty, easy cleanup, and I can run water on it right away. You'll notice on this tailpiece, there's no standard pop-up, like the rod that comes up here to sop up the sink. Jordan picked out, push button. These are really cool. The only downside on them, if there is a downside, if this is full of some nasty water. You gotta reach in it. You gotta reach in and undo the stopper. Oh, that'll never happen. Okay. And then I usually like to put pipe dope on the rubber because I've had them leak before because of the irregular base of this. Like if it's cast, it's not perfect. And this also seems to help the rubber slide around a little better and seal. Probably gonna get a lot of comments on that, but I like it. All right guys, tail piece is all in, looks great. Now here is how I'm gonna go from this quarter inch tubing to seven eighths barb. Went to the local Ace Hardware, found quarter inch barb by half inch male pipe thread, fitting number one. Fitting number two, half inch female pipe thread by three quarter inch barb. So those are gonna go together. So we got three quarter barb, seven eighths barb. Found this seven eighths hose, this is for a dishwasher. Fits perfect over that because it's made for seven eighths, it, but it's a little loose on the three quarter, but it still is gonna make a good seal. We'll make it all tight, put hose clamps there, a little baby one here, and we'll be ready to go. If you know a better way to do it, just let us know in the comments. See why I needed to make that so wide? I gotta turn that nut. It's got these big lugs on it. These lugs, <laughs> that's a lug. I call that a lug. <laughs> All right, I'll tighten up that little baby hose clamp. Turn the water on, got yourself a vanity. Put the doors on, put the handles on. Check this thing off the list. All right, awesome, that looks super clean under there. I gotta stop saying super, I get so many comments about that. Is that like, I say that all the time? Well, you're Superman. <laughs> all right, Jordan, it's all ready. You get the honors of turning it on for the very first time. Bells hey, are on. We, we did a great job installing We did a thing. great job. We did a great job. We did a great job. Yeah, a little waterfall. Hey, that looks really cool. Yeah. The oh. first sink of the stud pack build. Dang. All right, gang, dad always likes to do a flood test. So I've got the sink full of water here. I'm just gonna pop this sucker open, but we're checking for leaks, right? Down low. Yep. And then we're just gonna kind of flood the system with as much water as possible. Yeah, the cool thing about yours is we can see the leak from here. We might even have it open the doors. All right. And so then you just inspect. We're good. I just had to turn it on one more time. The vanity's all done and it looks beautiful. Take a look under here in the engine compartment. Look at all that. That looks so nice, so proud of that. And while we're in plumbing mode, we thought it'd be a great time to install the kitchen sink. Now, just like everything on this project, this isn't your normal run-of-the-mill kitchen sink. And this sink solves a big problem for Jordan. He didn't want a 24-inch wide dishwasher here taking up all this valuable cabinet space in a temporary kitchen. And he also didn't want a big drying rack on the counter, which there is very little of anyway. So what we got, it's a combination sink, dishwasher. It's gonna work great for him because all he does is put his dirty dishes in the sink anyway. Now he can just close the lid and turn it on. They're all clean in a couple hours. I got it all rigged up, mocked up downstairs. Let's go check it out. Here it is guys, brace yourselves because we're about to go on a little bit of a ride. You're seeing the back end of our Fotile dishwasher sink combo. I'm on the back side because you can see there's a ton of plumbing. I didn't want to try to fit all this in while I'm working in a cabinet on the ground and behind everything. So this was a great solution for us. I'm here at eye level. Let me show you what's going on. Got power right here. Got a whip for 120 volts. Here's our water inlet. Remember in the previous video, I said I always read the instructions cover to cover before I attempt anything like this. I'm glad I did because like on page 12, it said cold water only. Every dishwasher, 
I've ever installed in my entire life has connected to hot water. This one's gonna be cold. I'm not gonna connect it to hot because that's what I've always done. I'm gonna connect it to cold because that's what the manufacturer recommends. Now, Jordan wants a disposal. I got the smallest one I could find as far as like the profile because I knew I needed a lot of room under here to accommodate all these pipes. So let me walk you through it. This piece all came together in the box and we got what looks like a P-trap. Well, it is a P-trap, but it's not very deep. Compare how deep it is from here to here to this one. It's very shallow. Now, I would never put a double P-trap on a fixture. It's against code but the manufacturer says to do it. Again, I'm gonna follow the manufacturer's instructions and not do what I would normally do. The other reason I'm putting a P-trap over here is because this is the overflow for the sink. If I put this right into my sewer line, sewer gases would come back here into my sink. So I need a trap on the downside of the entire picture. So that's what this guy is. And then we're gonna tie the dishwasher into this T right here. And then we're gonna go out actually facing this way into our pipe coming out of the wall. And all these tubes right here, I'm not sure what is doing what. I think this one is the main drain for the dishwasher, but this is probably the main drain for the dishwasher. So I don't know, I'm just connecting it like the instruction said. And of course this all gets hose clamped together, but we're gonna do that later. I just wanted to mock it up for you. And here's my main reason. The dimension from the top of our counter, imagine this is our counter, the sink drops in, it's not an undermount, to the center of our pipe coming out of the wall on our rough end, I wrote it right here. Jordan measured for me, 19 and three quarter. And if we just leave this set up like it is, I'm at like 20, let's just call it 22 and three quarter for convenience sake, I'm three inches too low. In other words, my, my pipe coming out of the wall is way up here. So I need to make up that three inches. Are we gonna be able to do that? I think we are. I think we can make up an inch here on the outlet for the disposal. And I think we can make up two inches here on this T, which is gonna pick up the dishwasher drain and raise the trap even higher. Cutting it close. Cutting it real close. I mean, like, so close. We may even have to put this, like, just a little bit off of the level just to get all the altitude we can. So let's continue with our mock-up. We're going to cut all this together, try to get this outlet for the whole system as high as we can. So when we drop this in the countertop, it's an easy connection from here to the pipe coming out of the wall. Because the last thing I want to do is have to cut that wall open and move that sewer line. Well, the goal is to get all this plumbed up so we can just drop the sink in, Absolutely. make one connection, plug it in and be good. Yeah, we would leave all this connected, right? Yep. Done, and then just drop it in and that's it. Hook up the water, hook up the power. We start washing dishes. So this 90 coming off the disposal is bottomed out on this shoulder right here. And my T is bottomed out on the shoulder right here. We're going to start cutting our pipe with the T. I've got a pencil line right here. And once I cut it here, I have this portion of the T to slide into the P-trap. I picked this tool up a couple years ago. Absolutely love it. Gives you a little window right there where you can see your mark. And just spin it two, three turns almost. It even bevels it for you. So I put the T into my P-trap and I tightened the nut. I had to take this nut off because this lug was crashing into this nut. That's how tight it is. I may be able to come down a little bit, but again, I want all the altitude I can. Now let's put it together and we'll measure and cut the outlet off the disposal. Got it dry fit together now that we cut our T. Now let's see where we're at. From the top of our counter to the middle of our pipe, 20 and a half, we picked up quite a bit. And remember our original number, our goal is 19 and three quarter. So this is still three quarters of an inch low. I would like to go 19 and a half. In other words, I want this just a little higher than the outlet in the wall, so I have fall, so we, so we get good drainage. So where are we gonna get the rest of our distance from? Well, we're gonna get it from right here on this 90 coming off the disposal. But if I cut this, then that raises this up, the P-trap, which is what we want. So if this comes up, now we gotta line up with this. And are we gonna make it? And just eyeballing it, I can see the center of this pipe is about an inch above this one. So we can comfortably cut this 90 knowing we can still make up our dishwasher to the outlet on our teeth. But let's start with seven eighths. We can always cut more. I would hate to cut too much. I'm gonna remove this 90 and cut off seven eighths of an inch and we'll refit it. All right guys, we are all dry fit together. And we had two goals, remember? Of course we want pitch to our drain so water flows away from the dishwasher, not towards it. And the center of our outlet right here needs to be 19 and three quarters from the top of the counter. So two by four is the top of our counter and we are we're right there. I would like to be a little higher, but we're tight here. We can't go any more because now this is gonna pitch up. 
Let me show you that we got pitch on that with our little level here. And we've got just a little bit, just, just enough to get that water out of here. Didn't want to go any higher. And we, and we even went to the extreme of putting a level up here to make sure our sink was level because we know our counters are level. So I say we put all this together, put all our hose clamps on it, send it, Jordan. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. Gang, that's about as good as this is gonna get right here. This is all ready, but the area under the sink upstairs is not quite ready yet. Let me head up there and get it all dialed in so we can install our dishwasher sink. Let me walk you through what we did under the sink. It was pretty boring, but I'm gonna walk you through it and show you what I did. Started with the drain, inch and a half PVC from our rough coming out of the wall, got it all cleaned up, put in discussion there. Next thing I did was my angle stops. Got one for the hot, two on the cold side. Remember, this dishwasher takes cold water. Kind of unusual, but that's the manufacturer's instructions. Then I tackled the electric. I put a four by four extension ring on that single gang plastic box in the wall. Got it bonded because now I'm switching to metal. I got to bond the metal to my ground. I did that right there with a grounding clip. And yes, I even put big stretch all around it so it looks nice and perfect. We're ready on the electrical. We're ready on our water, ready on the drain. Let's go downstairs, grab that dishwasher, throw it in. You want to put some Lexel right here first? I absolutely do. Thing out of here, you gotta go all the way Guys, up. No, 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 no. Come on. Hold it. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Oh, smart, Gordon. Yeah, that one did not. Awkward angle. Yeah, you got it? Yeah, I did. All right. Should just drop now. Yep. Same time. Now we're thinking. It's Friday afternoon, man. My brain shuts down at 4. It's 5 p.m. Friday. It's 98 degrees. Wait, it's Friday. All right. Okay, you let go first. Okay. What's going on there? That's what's going on. That looks great. Woo! All right, guys, make it head away. I got the water already hooked up. I wrapped all the excess hose. There's like a 20 foot hose came with this thing. I wrapped it around the drain just to keep it out of the way. Kind of my last step before hooking up the drain is the electric. So remember that four by four extension box I put in there? Here's the whip that came with the appliance. I got a 90 and I put it through the knockout in a four by four metal plate. All I gotta do is make these up in the box with my Wagos, screw the cover on. The only thing I don't like about this is I don't have a means of disconnect up here at the dishwasher. So if somebody's gotta work on it, they gotta go downstairs to the panel. If we get busted on it by the inspector, I'll figure out a way to put a switch right there. I also have a disconnect on my app. So I can always shut the breaker off with my phone which is something that 99.999% of houses can't do. So it's pretty cool. But if I were working on this and you told me you turned it off on your phone, I'd right. be like, nah, dude. Right. I want you to go down to the panel and I want right. the thing off. Right. I'll send you a screenshot. <laughs> Way goes to the rescue again, right? Oh, ground, boom. Oh, I should have put these on first. Why didn't you tell me that? It's your world, I'm just living in it. Oh, I think it's the other way around. <laughs> I think everybody would agree. <laughs> All right. All right. Tighten those two screws. And we are done with the electrical side. I mean, that looks clean. And do not try to put a plug on this, guys. That's made to be hardwired. I've seen it done. People go to the store and put a plug on there and just plug it into an outlet. You got to hardwire it if that's what it's meant to be. Boom, we're all done, let's power it up. There we go, we got power, we got water, we got a drain. We got one more problem. We're gonna show you all the details about this thing a little later, but we gotta fix this first. This drawer under the sink, which I love, right? Really convenient. It clears the dishwasher. I don't know how we made that happen. It clears the disposal, disposal, but it's knocking into that infamous P-trap we put in. So we're gonna cut out the back of the drawer. It just happens to be steel. It can't be wood, right? That would be way too easy. So we made a couple of marks here and here. We're gonna go two inches deep, put this guy back. Let's start cutting the steel drawer. Got our cutout all marked. I came in half an inch from each corner, center punched it. I'm gonna drill a one inch hole right there so we have a nice easy radius in the inside corner instead of a nice 
sharp 90 degree. We turn the vacuum on, and drill these two holes. Thicker than I thought. Dang. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we didn't ruin like too much of the integrity of the back of the drawer because this lip that's bent over adds a lot of stiffness to the back. No, I think we're good. I think it'll be all right. Yeah, since it's so thick, we probably be okay. All right, let me get the file, clean that up, we'll give it a test shot. That looks pretty good, huh, Jordan? That's great. Yeah. All right, let's give it a test fit. I don't want to take this drawer out again. It is the final fit. I got a good feeling about this. Um, oh, what was that noise? <laughs> okay, that's what exactly, I can see right here, it is hitting. We didn't cut far enough, bud. Needed like two and an eighth. All right, guys, we gotta yank it out and cut a little bit more off. <laughs> that's that noise. Yes. All right, second try. I took off half an inch, Jordan. I wasn't coming back up here. Click, click. Nice. All right, that's clear. It works. Guys, we're gonna call the dishwasher installation 100% done. Super excited about that. Let me walk you through a few things we learned about it. Really cool features. Here's the power button. Then you have an open button. It's gonna release a latch and come up just a little bit. And then you have these hidden handles. You just lift it up just like that. Got a nice little stop back there. And if you lose power, check this out. Got a little emergency rip cord right there. You pull that and you can open the dishwasher. Got a cool basket in there. Little silverware basket. Recommends putting the sharp points down. That's good advice for any dishwasher. And uh, this is removable like that. Jordan got like the basic model. They make a model above that, which actually has a separate basket to wash fruit and seafood. I've never heard of anybody washing seafood in a dishwasher, but what a cool option. This model is 120 volts and it does heat the water. Remember, it's connected to cold water, so it heats it to 158 degrees. Pretty hot, a good temperature for washing dishes and killing all the nasty stuff. The cover right here does have a protective uh, piece of plastic. We're gonna leave it on there, but rest assured when we peel this off, it's a nice sleek piece of black glass and it's touch screen for all the controls. Uh, the sink on the left is, I'm gonna call it eight inches deep. Nice deep sink for an apartment like this. And on the soap side, you just sprinkle in like a teaspoon, a little bit more maybe of powdered dishwashing detergent. Liquid soap is not recommended. We also got a very cool faucet put in here. The water is on. That nice swivel on there, love that. And I'm sure that's a spray, yep. And we even got the disposal hooked up with an air switch. That is awesome. All right, guys, we would be remiss if we didn't tell you some of the things we would do differently if we knew at the get-go we would be installing a dishwasher like this. I'm going to be talking about our unit with the dishwasher on the right. I would put the water supply and the electric way down here in the lower left corner for easy access. Our drain, the rough end for the center of our inch and a half drain out of the wall was 16 inches above the finished floor. I would go 15 at the maximum because we are almost dead level and that extra inch from 15 to 16 will give you just a little more slope. Now, when our plumbers installed the rough plumbing, they made the center of the pipe 16 inches above the subfloor because that's standard for a kitchen sink and a dishwasher. Then we went to the build show and found this gym. The plumbing was already done. The drywall was already done. So we had to make it work and we made it by the skin of our teeth. So if I were doing this over, I'd probably put the water line and the electric in the lower left if the dishwasher's on the right and I would plumb in the drain like 15 at the most above your subfloor and that's going to give you the fall you need even if you add a disposal. Gang we are getting so close to finishing this garage apartment and moving Jordan up here super excited about that so go online see if you can find a combination combo like button just like the combo sink dishwasher we installed that way you can smash them both at once for us don't forget to check us out over at Instagram at Stud Pack Official. And we got a new YouTube channel, Stud Pack 2, kind of the lighter side of what we do here. Guys, thanks so much for all your support. We'll see you right back here on our very next Stud Pack video.